customer service. Yeah. Else. Fuck it, Ed. It's fuck it, Ed time. TC, you're undefeated, man. You're undefeated. Jaren, great night last night, obviously. And I, I, I feel like maybe a couple of years ago that night plays out differently. You were clearly frustrated on the great effort in center field, right? Now, Alex Cora after the game said, I love the aggressiveness. Uh, but you kind of contained that. You moved on from it. You made your impact with the plate. Talk about that whole process and maybe how the maturity helps you through, through, through moments like that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I just took a lot of talk in the offseason with myself and just realizing, you know, like, it's not about me and my personal success like JT talked about a little bit like just putting putting more emphasis on the on the team and teammates and stuff like that so I know it was a tough play and like I should have had it but I knew Nikki P was going to pick us up get us out of the inning and then I knew we were going to come and score some runs so I just had to be able to flush it and focus on the team and figure out what we were going to do next you hit the home run just you know on a night like that where, where you now you sort of have been able to impact the game after maybe you felt like a letdown earlier what does it feel like running around the bases in a moment like that I mean all home runs feel great I'm sure yeah but do some kind of feel a little better than the others as you round the bases yeah I was just happy that I was able to do something for Nikki P I know he was probably I don't know if he was frustrated at me or not but I know I was frustrated myself so I was just happy that I was able to do something for him and help pick him up a little bit game is so humbling uh, the, the best fail right uh, how much of that is is the maturity you're gaining as you go like just learning to fail learning to deal with the bumps in the road that that baseball is going to throw at you no matter how good you are yeah I mean just knowing that we're playing a game of failure is just that's like the first step and just knowing that even the greatest strikeout miss fly balls like it, it just happens it's part of the game but I've had a good group of guys behind me, you know, picking me up and coaching me and teaching me and just letting me know, like, hey, man, like, failure comes with this game. But it's when you could uh, get away from that and just focus on the good things that you're doing is the best part of the game. Game began last night. Uh, Verdugo, full speed out of the box, just a little bobble from Wong, and he beats it out, kind of turns to the dugout, gives it a let's go, you know. And I'm not sure that's a play he does a year ago, right? He talked about that. I got to hustle. I got to work on the little things. He comes back this year and gets it. Everyone continues to grow in this game, don't they? Absolutely, yeah. That was that was a huge moment for us, you know, because Doogie's one of the big leaders on this team, and and I look up to him as a as a person and a teammate. So seeing him bust his butt is just like, oh, I, I can't wait to go out there and bust my butt just like that. It's contagious, right? Absolutely. This group, I, I felt like even in spring training, and I, I've been around this team a long time, right? 2013, they won a World Series, and I'm not laying that on you. We'll see how it <laughs> plays out, okay? But. Uh, I'm sure it sounds good, but but that was a team that brought in some veterans and, and they kind of meshed right away. It was Napoli and Victorino and Gomes and guys who'd won elsewhere. And I said at the beginning of camp, I, you know, look at what Duvall has done. Look at what Justin Turner has done. You know, look at what Corey Kluber has accomplished in this game. Yoshida in Japan, like these weren't just veterans. These are guys with success. What was it like at the beginning of camp? Because it really was kind of a completely new voice. And it's not to say anything about the guys who were here last year or years before, but sometimes that comes together quickly, sometimes it doesn't. And it kind of felt at spring training like this group came together quickly. Did it feel like that down there? Yeah, I mean, I remember introducing myself to Doovie and it was just yeah. talking to like, like he has a gold glove, he's a great player. Like, and I was just like, he just feels like you're talking to a normal guy. like. And then you look at these guys and what they've done, you're like, holy crap, these guys have done so much in this game. It's ridiculous. But, like, it's nice to have guys like that that are just so easy to talk to and they've accomplished so much. It just makes it so much easier to pick their brain and, like, learn things that they know that you don't know yet. So that just makes it so much better. And they're new voices. Even though they've been around the game, they're new to you. Yeah. Right? So now do you sort of maybe pick up different things they, they maybe point you in a direction you hadn't thought about before like what's that like for you yeah and and they're more than welcome to come up to me like they've come up to me a couple times like hey like I do this like Doobie's talked to me in the outfield because he played I'm pretty sure he talked about me about he played third base and he when he went to the outfield he's like oh I felt like I was going home and when I went to the outfield, I felt like I was going to a different planet. <laughs> so we had a lot to talk about in spring about that. But, yeah, he's just told me, like, he's just taught me some things. And we've talked and had great conversations in the outfield. So it's just been awesome. It's still an ongoing process out there, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. What's, what's the biggest difference? I mean, really, I mean, and I, it, Alex Corr and I had a great conversation early in the season about, you know, we, I was talking about your first step. 
And he was like, no, no, it's before the first step. It's like, watch him. And Cora said at the time, this early in the season, he said, watching you in the outfield now, he said, it felt like I was watching an infielder. And he said that in a good way. Like, you're fluid. You're moving. When you're in the infield, you can't be static, right, yeah. when the ball's hit. And he said, now he can make the first step. And if it's in the wrong direction, he's moving. He can get back to where he needs to get to or vice versa. Yeah. What's, what translate, what doesn't from infield to outfield? So, for me, it was really – in the infield like you had to be quick in the first step and then when I got to the outfield I was like oh I thought I had to read the ball and then do like a good route but like our analytic team has been awesome with me telling me like hey like some of the best outfielders have the worst route efficiency but their jumps are so good that they can get to any ball so they're like let's just focus on your jump so we just busted my butt working on my jump and when you're moving you're athletic so like say I'm moving to my left because my pitch comm tells me it's a certain pitch but I'm moving and I have to go the other direction my body's already moving so it just makes it easier to to change direction I think fans don't think about the pitch comm for an outfielder but how much does that help you sort of be where you think you need to be oh absolutely I take full advantage of it that's that's kind of what's helped me like if certain pitches are going to a certain direction you know I can maybe take a little baby shuffle or just set my mindset to think the ball might be hit this way and it's it's really helped me with some of my jumps to be able to get to a ball routinely talking to guys who scouted you your speed was always such a weapon high school college everybody knows and you know, a couple of scouts said well i wouldn't be surprised if as a young guy he was always be told hit it on the ground you beat it out yeah. and then you sort of have to make that adjustment to be able to drive the ball and now all of a sudden maybe you're starting to move things out of whack like i feel like your swing has kind of been a constant adjustment really maybe back to college does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I remember in college, I was just uh, just trying to hit line drives the other way and make the defense make plays. I mean, so I just kind of kind of just trying to relive that and just trying to hit line drives hard and, and make them make plays, like maybe try and make the shortstop move a little bit. If I hit a chopper to him or something, you know, just make the defense work is just kind of what I'm trying to do and put good at-bats together. In this ballpark, if you can use all fields, it can really help you out, can it? Yeah, I, I, I like using the monster every once in a while. It's, it's very helpful. And is that something you were able to do really even a couple years ago? Like, has the monster always been your friend, or is that something you've had to get a little bit of use to to be able to use the power to that side? Um, I think, yeah, it was just, I think just my swing is just playing to help me that way. I'm just hitting the ball to all fields right now. I just... Just putting together quality of bats, but yeah, when I hit the ball that way, I'm just just trying to hit the ball hard off the monster and hopefully get a double out of it every time. Let's talk about the hands. Uh, you had the famous, now famous conversation with Pedro uh, with the Pedroia, but but even before anything, you changed this year. Like again, that seems something over the last couple of years. Where I had down to the ways, you kind of had a almost straight up samurai thing going for mm -hmm. a little while. Now your hands are up. But what did Pedroia tell you about why that would help you? Uh, he just told me to be athletic. And because he asked me, he's like, did your hands used to be up in the minors? And I was like, yeah, they used to be up. And he goes, well, why'd you change? I was like, well, I needed to make certain adjustments to help my body move better, which is what we've been doing. Because I used to be just a little stiff robot that used to just slap the ball. But everything that I've done has just been a process. I mean, it's just like we talk about all the time is just trusting the process. And it's just everything that I've built up and worked on and taking bits of pieces I'm hoping that it's coming together to the swing that I have now and I'm thankful for everybody that's helped me along the way chase rate is way down uh, is that experience is that the hands is that something different you're doing off the field like what's led to that yeah I mean just sticking with the approach that we talk about in our hitters meetings and we go over all the time and and just knowing what pitches I hit best I think that was a big thing for me because Last year, I used to just swing everything that I thought was good, which got me into trouble. Like maybe it was a good pitch, but it wasn't my good pitch to swing at. So I'm just being more selective on what I can do damage with is kind of my process. Was it in Oakland last year? You, you came back, you, you rejoined the team. And I remember you were talking at the time like, first time through, you maybe weren't somebody you've always been, right? You're trying to fit in. You're the young guy, and I'm just going to sit over here in the corner. And I love the quote from Alex Corey. He said, you know, we like the player, but we like the person too, right? It was Jaron Duran who made himself a big leaguer, and we don't want to lose that. But but you can, right? Because, I mean, it's a major league clubhouse. It can be a little overwhelming, can it? Yeah, especially when you have, like, some great guys in the clubhouse. Like, it's when you, like, it's when you really have to sit down and be like, well, like, you're going through things struggling like 
and you don't want to bother these older guys that are struggling too and they're supposed to be leaders and they're supposed to help me and go through their stuff like when you really think about it, it's like dang like do i really want to bother them with my stuff so like at the end of the day you just got to choose the right moments to talk to these guys that was kind of my thing it was like i always didn't want to get in their way because i know they're going through stuff too so I didn't want to bother them with my stuff was kind of my thought. Did that kind of play on the field too? Like may, even with your speed, maybe I don't want to risk taking a bag and getting thrown out because that will hurt the team. Yes, absolutely. I thought about that all the time. Or I didn't want to dive after a ball and miss it and then them be upset at me. Like I was always worried about upsetting my teammates instead of just playing the game hard and, and them liking the way I play the game instead of worrying about the way I was playing. Last night, you dive at a ball and miss it. You slam the glove and, and then the home run. And I saw, I looked right at you, I saw the reaction. Are you better at compartmentalizing that now? Are you able, you know, like, it's still a process, I'm sure. It's still, you can't just flush it away that moment, but can you get through it quicker than maybe you used to? Yeah, I mean, I had guys picking me up right away. Like, I had Huddy, I had Doogie. They were all telling me, like, hey, bro, like, that was the right play. Like, we want you to play aggressive. Like, he's like, I would rather you make an aggressive mistake like that than pull up and then the ball skips by you or something like that. So that that's also very helpful is that they're backing me up like that. If I was making a, a movie about a major league team and I was gonna cast like the sage veteran who's the ultimate character guy to go, it'd be like Justin Turner. You would just have Justin Turner be that guy in the movie. He comes in here, again, a new guy to this team. We know his resume, we know, you know, you don't win the Roberto Clemente award if, if you're not a character guy, right? But what has he been like as a sounding board for you and just as a presence in this clubhouse? Gee, I mean, he's kind of like, he's kind of like Mr. Miyagi a little bit because he's so calm and like collective and the guy could be 0 for 5, but he acts like he's 5 for 5. Like, he just, he's been there, done it. Like, he's just that, that stud, like, veteran guy that you look up to and you want to be like. Because I've had plenty of people say, like, hey, man, like, if you want to model yourself after somebody, you should look at JT. Like, that guy always has a smile on his face. He's always talking, always chit-chatting with the boys. Like, like, that guy just never has a bad day. Like, he could go for 5 and he'd be having a good day. You're still a young guy, but, but that changes quick in this game, right? Like 22 becomes 25, becomes 28 real fast. Uh, have you thought about that? Like who you want to be as a veteran? Like, you know what I mean? As you mature in this game, the type of guy you want to be for the younger guys, the next wave of guys. You've probably done some of that in Worcester already, but, but as you spend more time here, are you sort of modeling yourself into the guy you want to be? Yeah, I mean, I kind of I kind of want to be that guy that like when younger guys come up like and they're like nervous, like I'll be over there to like to joke with them right away and like be like, "Hey bro, like welcome to the team. Like if you ever have any problems or need to talk to anybody, like I'm here for you. Like I just want everybody to feel welcomed right away." Cuz I knew when I came up like I was just nervous and didn't want to bother anybody, but like to have an older guy or somebody that's there come up to you, that's that's like really helpful. So I, I want to be able to be that guy for some from guys. You've been pretty open about the mental challenges of this game. Um, is that something, you know, I, I'm a dad of a couple of young guys in their 20s, and, and we talk so much about mental health and, and getting through that. Is that you know, your story, I think, resonates with a lot of people who, who you know, will never get near a major league field, right? But we all have challenges. We all have careers we're trying to build. If you hear from somebody like, that's pretty cool. Like, he was open about that. How does that make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel good, you know, because I know there's a lot of people out there like me that are going through it a little bit mentally, and they don't really – want to open up because they don't want to bother people with their problems but so I hope that they like see what I've been doing or what I've done and hopefully it helps them open up to some people because I know that there's a lot of people out there that are that are shy and don't talk a lot like me so I hope that like I can hopefully inspire them to want to talk to other people about what's going on. I did want to ask you about the World Baseball Classic what was that experience like? <laughs> Basically I got to act like a little kid for for the time that I was there, just every every base hit, I got to jump out of the dugout like it was a Game 7 World Series and with the sombrero on to add <laughs> to the content. But, yeah, it was it was awesome. I got to basically scream and yell and lose my voice every single day, so it was awesome. You know, there was something like, he, well, he didn't play a lot, but but you got to be part of something with some of the best players in the game with with the stakes as high as, he, you know, that, that had to be a great experience just being around that. Yeah, I mean – when we played the Astros in the playoffs a couple of years ago, like that was loud, but the WBC was, it felt like it was on another level. Like when we were playing Japan, like 
And when we played Puerto Rico and Bias hit that ball the other way that I didn't think was going to get out, but it got out. <laughs> like, I have never seen such a crowd get so crazy. But yeah, it was it was, it was just playoffs, playoff atmosphere every single pitch. Like, it was like every single pitch mattered. And that's a lot of that takes a lot on the body and a lot of energy. So it was it was an awesome experience. All right, this might be a weird question as we get to wrapping it up, but you've you've dealt with the failure. We've talked about that. Learning to deal with failure. How's dealing with success? I mean, you've come up here now, and for the month, you know, your numbers are up near anybody in Major League Baseball. Is that all part of it too? Learning to to sort of take that in stride and not letting that become something. Um, I think it's just all about riding the wave. Like, you don't want to get too high. You don't want to get too low. You want to just stay right in the middle and limit your lows and just, just ride the wave, honestly. Like, when you're going good, everybody feels good. Like, the team, like, you feel good about yourself, but it's – it really shows your character when you're struggling and you can still put a smile on your face and go out there and steal some hits away from people. That's what Huddy tells me all the time, and that's what fires me up. Like, if I get out and I come in here and I'm upset at myself, he goes, hey, man, go take away a hit. And so does Rosie, and I'm like, oh heck yeah! Like that fires me up. Like I'm gonna go, like I'm gonna go make a great play for my pitcher. Like it's not all about just hitting. Like I can go make a great play and still pick up the team. So that's that's one thing that's really resonated with me. And I did ask you, some home runs feel better than others. How do grand slams feel? Well, I didn't think that ball was going out, so I was running as hard <laughs> so as I could. So you got your head down, your full. I had ball? my head down. I was running like the lizard, like a lizard, just trying to get on three. And then I heard everybody screaming. I was already around second, so it, it was. I didn't think it was going. I don't. I don't hit enough to like be able to pimp them. I just hit it and run as hard as I can. So the last nine, you felt pretty good. Yeah, the one last night felt pretty good. <laughs> Let me ask you the last question about this team. Just, it, it, it's a good vibe. I keep telling people, you know, the, the expectations were low, and, and we'll see where it all goes, win-loss, but whatever the case, it's a fun team. You know, the, the comeback wins speak for themselves. The pitching's coming together. The offense has been there from day one. A lot of different characters. What's it like to be in the middle of it? It seems like a really fun team, a good group to be a part of. Yeah, even, even in the struggles, we're, we're really together, which is a huge thing, like, all we have to do is just keep playing good. Like we're we're a good team. We know we're a good team, and I have tr I have faith in all of us, and we all have faith in each other. So we're we're gonna be good, and we're just having fun and enjoying the baseball journey. All right, I know you're not a guy who loves to do a lot of this, so we appreciate the time. You did a great job. Thank you, thank you. We'll give it an A plus. Well done. <laughs> See, you're coming along. Uh, that's Jaron Duran uh, having a great run here with the Red Sox. We appreciate the time. Uh, this week's guest on the TC and Company podcast. Secret service. No. It's bucket hat. It's bucket hat time. TC, you're undefeated, man. You're undefeated.